So I know in the last video, I tried to take my controller out to lunch to help improve my networking skills with it, but it didn't turn out so great. So I was trying to think, what else can I do to help improve my networking skills with the controller other than taking it out to a meal? Well, I thought, what if I take it to go see a movie? Worst idea ever. So I heard this movie's really good. Hopefully you enjoy it. And now, and now presenting, presenting a how-to how pixel, pixel film about, about how, how to destroy, destroy a pixel, pixel controller. controller. So if you take a look here, I have my F16 V3 and I'm trying to hook up the Ethernet cable into it. The main power cord for the thing, it is wired directly into the controller. Um, I didn't know which colors to use because I forgot. Maybe I just need a plug-in power and try that again. Okay, close your eyes. Hey everyone, thanks for watching How To Pixel, and welcome back to the Light Show Networking with Nick series. If this is your first time watching, this series is all about how we get our Pixel controllers and our show players connected into a network so they can communicate. You might know how to set up a Pixel controller or a Raspberry Pi with FPP for your show player, but if you can't get them to communicate, then there's no Light Show. So that's what this whole series is about, getting all of our devices connected onto a network so the Light Show can work. So before we get into today's networking topic and everything in this video, I'm going to give a quick recap on what happened in the last three episodes. In the first episode, I talked about the complete basics on networking, what IP addresses are, gateways, all that stuff. In the second episode, we talked about how you connect a Raspberry Pi with FPP on it as your show player to a network for the first time so you can access the user interface and change settings on here. And then in the third episode, we talked about how you connect to a Pixel controller for the first time and how you also hook this to your network so you can access it. But now in today's video, we're going to talk about the different ways you can get these two devices to communicate. Now, you might not have a Raspberry Pi as your show player and you might not have this type of Pixel controller as your Pixel controller. But this video will still apply for every type of device. Right now, our devices are just there on the network. We've connected them there, but they can't really do anything. They don't know who else to communicate with because we haven't set any of that up. Now, there are lots of different ways we can make our devices communicate, especially when you're running a light show. And the goal of this video is to summarize some of the most common ways that people do it so you can choose a method that'll work best for your setup. I'll also talk about the pros and cons of each method and a little bit of what you need, but for the next episodes after this, I'll talk specifically about each method in an episode and how to set everything up so you can get all the information on how to do it for that specific method. Now, before I go into the different methods, I want to talk about two things first. First thing is, for most of the methods in this video, you aren't limited to just one pixel controller or one show player that you can have work on it. In fact, most medium to big size light shows often have multiple pixel controllers and sometimes even multiple show players, but most of the methods still work to run however many devices you need. Some shows may even have devices that aren't Pixel controllers or Raspberry Pis. A few examples of different devices they might have are BeagleBone computers or actual computers that can function as show players as well, not just a Raspberry Pi, or color light cards like I have in my show that run my panel. So there are a lot of different devices besides Pixel controllers and Raspberry Pi show players that you can have within your light show network. And then the second thing I wanted to talk about is almost like a rule to remember. No matter what setup you pick, if you have a show player sending live data to a Pixel controller to convert it to send out to the lights, that data must be sent over a hardwired connection, over an Ethernet connection. You can't send that data over Wi-Fi because it is so much data that the show player has to send to the Pixel controller, it won't be able to work. In almost every setup, you're going to have your show player sending live data to your Pixel controller, but there are a few setups you might choose like master and remote or standalone where things are a little bit different and you don't have a show player sending actual pixel data to a pixel controller. And I'll talk about those methods later on in this video, but just keep that in the back of your mind that if you have something sending actual live data to a controller, that has to have a wired connection. But now let's get into the different methods on how you can make all of your devices communicate. I chose five methods for this video. These are probably the five most common methods and covers almost what every light show uses. So let's get started with method one. 
This first method is a really basic and easy way to get pixel controllers communicating with your show players, but it does have some major cons to it. For this method, all you have to do is hardwire your pixel controller or controllers into your main router and then also hardwire your show player. Your show player could be a Raspberry Pi, an actual computer, anything that is sending data to your pixel controller. After that, there's just a few settings you have to change on your pixel controller and show player so they know the address of each other and how to communicate with it, but that's about it. It's really simple and anyone with basic knowledge on networking should be able to hook this up. So the main pros of this method is it's easy to use, easy to set up, and you don't need any additional hardware like an extra router or network switches. All you need is an ethernet cable for each of the devices. Now for the cons of this method. The first con is that if you have all of your light show devices in your garage or outside, you're gonna have to have an ethernet cable for each device going from inside where your router is, outside or to your garage or wherever all of your stuff is, you're gonna have to have ethernet cables running that far. Now you could just take one ethernet cable, hook it to your router and then put a network switch on the other end of the ethernet cable in an area where all of your devices are, but you still need at least one ethernet cable between your router and where your main setup is. But the second con is probably the biggest con and this method will slow down your network a lot. Since your main show player, such as a Raspberry Pi, is constantly sending data through your router to your Pixel controller live at 20 or 40 frames per second, however many frames per second your light show has, since the Raspberry Pi is sending all that data to the Pixel controller and it's going through your main router, it's gonna slow down all of your other devices because the router has to handle sending all that to the Pixel controller. Now, if you have a smaller show with maybe under a thousand lights, you might not notice it that much, but when you start getting to a medium sized light show or a big light show, it will be quite noticeable and it might even be enough to crash your router. So overall, this method is quite simple and easy to use, but it comes at the cost of slowing down your network. Now, when would I recommend using this method? Well, I'd only recommend it if you have a very small show under a thousand pixels and maybe if this is your first year doing a light show and you don't want to get into all the nitty gritty networking stuff, this could be a simple method for you if you're okay with it possibly slowing down your network. This method is mostly useful if you're running a show for maybe just a few nights and you don't need a permanent network setup. If you do plan on expanding your show in the future, even if this is your first year, I'd recommend picking a different method so you can get into a good habit of setting up a separate network or setting up something else that won't clog your home network. But that is the first method. Now let's move on to the second method. For this method, I'm pretty sure it's called the bridge method, or at least that's what I call it. But it involves using your Raspberry Pi as your show player and using that as a bridge between your home network and a separate light show network, kind of. If you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi, you'll know it has two different network interfaces on it. It has the Ethernet interface, so you can connect to a network with Ethernet, and it also has the Wi-Fi interface, and you could also connect to a network with Wi-Fi. Well, both of these interfaces can be used at the same time, so you could connect to one network with two interfaces, or you could connect to two networks with one interface each. So that's kind of what we do with the Raspberry Pi in this method. You connect your Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi to your home router, and that way you can access the Raspberry Pi. And then with the Ethernet interface, you connect that directly into your Pixel controller. And that Ethernet interface will kind of act as its own network. So now with this setup, whenever it's time for your light show to start, your Raspberry Pi will have a direct connection with your Pixel controller and be able to send all the data over to your controller without clogging anything else. Because even though your Raspberry Pi is connected with Wi-Fi to your home network, it doesn't need to send anything that way. All of it's just going to go through out of the Ethernet port into the pixel controller. The reason we still use the Wi-Fi interface though to connect it to our router is so we can go on to our Raspberry Pi and look at the control menu, change any settings we need. And since the controller is hardwired to the Raspberry Pi, which is hooked to the router with Wi-Fi, we could technically also access the pixel controller with a little bit of extra settings. It might sound complicated, but I'll make sure to explain it in all the detail when I make a separate video about just this method so it will all make sense. So what are the pros to this method? Well, the first main important one is it keeps all the light show data separate from your main router, so nothing gets clogged over there. Second is, unlike with the first method, 
you don't need an ethernet cable going between your router and any of the devices out there. The only ethernet cable is going between your Raspberry Pi and the Pixel controller. So every time we want to access those devices, we're doing it over Wi-Fi, but as long as you have the Raspberry Pi right next to the Pixel controller, you only need a short ethernet cable going between there. This makes it a lot easier to have your setup outside or in a garage or somewhere because you don't need any of your cables coming inside. Now for the cons of this method. The first one is that this method is a little bit tricky to set up. It's not horrible, but there are more steps involved than there were with the last method. The second con is sometimes you might be restricted to only having one pixel controller off of the Raspberry Pi's ethernet port. There's only the one ethernet port, so unless you get a network switch or you have a pixel controller where you can daisy chain controllers off of one connection, you will only be able to have the one ethernet port. It's not a huge con though because network switches aren't that expensive and I'm pretty sure most pixel controllers have a daisy chaining feature, so not really a big deal, but I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Using this method is really good if you have a small to medium sized light show because you're keeping all of your data separate from your home network while still not having to buy an extra router and all that to set up an actual light show network. If this is your first year running a light show and you plan on expanding and you're okay with doing a little bit of extra settings, this is the method I'd recommend using for you because it's not too complicated to set up, but you still do get a lot of features, but you don't have to deal with all that data flooding your router. Now, once you get into having a really big light show, usually it's good to do the next method that I'm going to explain after this one. But technically, you can use the bridge method, as I call it, for a huge display as well. But that's the second method. Now let's move on to the third method. For this method, instead of having your Raspberry Pi be a bridge between your home network and half of a light show network, or just connecting all of your devices into your home network, we're actually going to make a completely entire separate network. We can call it the light show network, and this will be completely separate from your home network. I don't really have a name for this method, but if you choose this one, then you will have a true light show network. The way this method works is you take a separate router that isn't your home network's router and you connect that router into your home router. And then you connect all of your light show devices, all of your controllers, all of your Raspberry Pis, show players, any light show device into that second router. That router then routes all the data and keeps it separate from your home network. But if any of those devices need to access the internet, it will allow them to go to the home network to then go out to the internet. So doing this is sort of like having a network inside of a network. But this makes it so you can have lots of devices connected to your second router and still keep them separate from your main router. It won't slow down anything unless you're downloading a large file to go to the Light Show Network. But any communication that needs to happen within the Light Show Network stays within the Light Show Network. Now since all of the Light Show devices still have a way to get to the main network, you could still use your phone, tablet, computer, whatever you want to access the user interface of those devices because your phone or computer will connect to your main router then that'll go through to the second router and then that'll go through to whatever device you want to connect to. Now since pretty much every router has Wi-Fi built into it you can have your own light show Wi-Fi network as well so if you have any devices that don't need to have a hardwired connection such as something running in master and remote mode you can connect those with Wi-Fi to the second router that way you don't need lots of Ethernet cables. With the bridge method, everything had to be connected to the Raspberry Pi through Ethernet because the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi interface was already being used to connect to your main router. But since you have a second router, you'll have Wi-Fi and Ethernet available. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have a show player sending actual live data to a Pixel controller, that still needs an Ethernet connection. But if you have Master Remote or something that doesn't need a hardware connection, you can use Wi-Fi. So what are the pros of this method? Well, like the last method, this method will keep all of the light show data separate from your home network, so it won't get clogged up, it won't slow down your home network, it'll all be separate. If you ever need to mess with settings on the router, if you need to mess with controllers, if you need to boot up or boot down that second router, that's not gonna mess with anything on the home network, since you have your own separate area. So if you have someone in your house that's trying to watch a TV show and you need to shut down your network, it's not going to interfere with them because they still have the main network. Second is there aren't really any limits to how many devices you can have connected now because since you have a whole separate router, you can have as many devices as that router can handle. So you can have multiple pixel controllers, 
multiple Raspberry Pis, multiple computers, whatever you need. As long as the router is powerful enough to handle it, you can connect whatever you want to it. And then third, like I said, is that you have the ability to connect any devices that have Wi-Fi and don't need an Ethernet connection. You can connect them to your light show network with Wi-Fi. Now on to the cons of this method. First, this method is probably the most complicated method to set up because you have to set up an entire additional router. You have to configure some things on your main router and then you have to configure all of your devices to connect to your router. Second is like with the first method, you do need an ethernet cable between your main router and your light show router. So if your light show router is going to be where all of your setup is, where you have all of the controllers and stuff, you are going to have to run an ethernet cable from your main router to wherever your second router is. And then the third con is you do have to spend some extra money to actually buy a router for this method to work. Now you don't need anything insanely fast, especially if you don't have lots of controllers. My light show, I was actually able to run on a really old router and it still mostly worked. So you don't have to shell out a ton of money to buy a second router. And I'm going to explain when I make the video that's separate for just this method, what types of routers to look for. But it is something you need to be aware of. You are going to have to pay for a second router. So now what types of light shows would I recommend this method for? I'd recommend this method for any big light shows or light shows where you have a lot of devices that are needed to run your light show. This method is the best method for keeping everything light show related separate from your main network, but it does involve a large amount of setup and you do need some understanding on what IP addresses are, gateways, subnets, all of that within networking. For me personally, I choose this method because I like this method. I like having my own light show network and my show has a little bit over 5,000 pixels. Last year, I had two Raspberry Pis and a pixel controller running on this method. And then this year, I'm planning to have two Pixel controllers and two Raspberry Pis running off this method. If this is your first year doing a light show and it's not a massive light show, then this method might be a little bit overkill and too complicated. So you might want to start out with the bridge method and then maybe later down the line, you can switch to buying an actual router to have a light show network. That's what I did for the first few years. I had the bridge method and then I think either last year or two years ago, I can't remember, but... One of those times I switched to having a separate light show network. But now let's move on to the fourth method. So this method is going to be a little bit different than the rest of the methods we've talked about in this video so far. For all the methods we've talked about, we have an actual show player sending live data to a pixel controller and that pixel controller then converts it to pixel data. So frame by frame, all that data is being sent over. But with this method, we don't do that. We use something called master and remote mode. This method is really cool and you don't usually need to hardwire anything. All of your devices can communicate with Wi-Fi. The way this works is you have your master, which is usually your show player like a Raspberry Pi. And then you have your remotes, which are controllers, sometimes another Raspberry Pi if you want the main one to control a second Raspberry Pi. And then you take an SD card with all the light show files on it, anything the controllers need. And then you put that SD card in each controller or each Raspberry Pi. And then those files are also on the master Raspberry Pi. Then when it comes time to start the show, instead of the main Raspberry Pi sending out all the data live to each device, it'll send a message to each device saying, hey, it's time to begin this sequence, start playing it. And then every few seconds, the master device checks in to make sure all the remotes are in sync. And if they are running out of sync, the master will make them go in sync. So instead of sending tons of pixel data live, you're just sending a message every few seconds to make sure all the devices are in sync. And then you send a message when to start whatever sequence is beginning. So this method is really cool, but it does only work with certain devices. I'm not sure of all the devices it works with, but I do know it works on any FPP based device. So if you have a Raspberry Pi or a BeagleBone controller that runs off of FPP, all of that will work. And then if you have any Falcon V3 or newer controllers, so like the F16 V3, V4, and V5, or the F48s, all of those have master and remote mode on them. But other than that, I'm not sure of other controllers that have master and remote. So you'll have to do some research to see if your device will work with this. And then master and remote, like I said, is usually done over Wi-Fi. So you have to make sure that your Pixel controller has Wi-Fi capabilities on it. 
Now you can use this method in combination with the last one. So you have your own light show Wi-Fi network and you can connect all of your devices to that Wi-Fi network. Or you could just connect all the devices with Wi-Fi to your main network. However, I've noticed from doing this, it still slows down your network just slightly because there is still sending a decent amount of data to check in on each device every second. But it is nowhere near as bad as sending actual pixel data through the router. So now what are the pros with this method? First, everything can be wireless. Everything will run over Wi-Fi since it's mastered and remote and since it's not that much data that needs to be sent over from one device to the other. This is great if you have a light show that maybe takes place on both sides of a road. I don't think it'd be easy to run an ethernet cable across the road. So if you had props on the other side of the street, you can use remote mode and master mode and make those devices communicate with each other. Second is this method isn't too complicated to set up. I'd say it's probably a little bit more difficult than the first method, but maybe about as easy as the bridge method. If you're gonna be using it on your main home network, there's not really any settings you need to change to your router. If you are going to be using it on a light show network though, you will have to set up the light show router. And now for the cons. The first con is you're limited to how far your Wi-Fi range is. So you can't have a remote device like a mile away if your Wi-Fi doesn't reach. But if your Wi-Fi is a big range, you can have two devices on the opposite side of your property and they can still communicate through Wi-Fi. This con is a little bit obvious, but I just want to make sure everyone thought about it that you can't be outside of your Wi-Fi range for this to work. The second con is, like I said, this method only works on certain controllers and show players, so you're going to have to check to make sure that you have a device that will work with this. And then the third con is you do need to get an SD card for each individual device to put the files on, but that's not that hard. SD cards aren't that expensive. And usually, light show files don't take a ton of storage, so 32 gigabytes or less should be enough. Now, what type of shows would I recommend using this method for? Well, actually, this method isn't commonly used as the main method for a light show. Usually, it's used in combination with a different method. That doesn't mean, though, that you can't use this as your main method. You definitely can. It's just not that commonly used as the main method. It's usually used in combination with the third method. So I recommend using one of the other methods first. And then there's not really a good size light show to use this method for. I'd say just use it whenever you need something wireless. But try to have an ethernet connection. If you can't, then you can look into using this method. Like I said, it's not too complicated, but I think it works best when combining it with another method. Now for this last method, it isn't used as commonly as the others, but I still want to bring it up because it can be useful for a few people. For this method, instead of having a show player send your pixel controller data or use master and remote and have the devices communicate that way, with this method, we only have a single pixel controller running in what's called standalone mode and the pixel controller does everything itself. Now this method does only work for pixel controllers that have the standalone mode built into them. Some pixel controllers might not have it, some might have it. The pixel controllers that I know of that have it are also again any Falcon V3 or newer controllers. So the F16 V3 through V5 and the F48s. For any other Pixel controller, you'll have to again see if it works with standalone mode. The way standalone mode works is all you do is take an SD card again with all of the sequence files and media files and whatever your light show has. You put that on an SD card and put that into the Pixel controller. If the Pixel controller has standalone mode built in, then it should have a bare bones scheduler, just something that you can tell it when to stop and start the playlist. And that's about it. With most Pixel controllers with standalone mode, there isn't a lot of features, but this is the easiest way to set up any light show in terms of networking, because there really isn't any networking to do. All of the Pixel data will stay within that one controller. It won't go anywhere else because it's running in standalone mode. And the mode itself says it, it's basically standing alone. So really the only bit of networking you need to do for this mode is make a connection between your router and the Pixel controller. That way you can access the Pixel controller to change any settings. So you can set up either an Ethernet connection or a Wi-Fi connection if your controller supports it. That way you have some way to access the controller to change the settings. Now there is a problem with this method and it's trying to figure out how you'll get audio to come out of the Pixel controller. Almost everyone that has a light display has audio synced to the sequences and when you're using like a 
Raspberry Pi as your show player. It has an audio jack built in, so you can have the audio go out of there or a USB adapter if you have that. But with Pixel controllers, there are no built-in audio ports. Now, there are some Pixel controllers, like almost all the Falcons, they have a type of connector for audio. So on Pixel Controller's website, you can buy a little adapter that plugs into here, and then it gives you a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so you can get audio out. So you'll have to see if your Pixel Controller has any way to get audio out, and if you need an adapter for it. And if it doesn't have audio, then you probably won't be able to use this setup if there's audio in your sequences. So here are the pros for this method. First, this is, like I said, the simplest way of setting up a light show. You don't need any other devices. All you need is one single pixel controller. It also doesn't clog your network and there's no advanced settings you need to do to make this work. Second is with this method, you technically don't have to have an ethernet cable between your router and your pixel controller. So if the pixel controller is outside and you don't want to run any cables to it, you can connect it with Wi-Fi to your router so you can access it. But now here are the cons of this method. First is this method is not expandable. Once you reach the limit of how many pixels your pixel controller can control, you can't expand to it. You can't hook any more controllers to it because the mode is called standalone. It's meant to be just one single controller that does everything. So if you need to add more pixel controllers or any other light show devices, they won't be able to communicate if you're using standalone mode. So you will have to switch to a different mode. Second is you get way less features with standalone mode in terms of scheduling because on a show player with using like FPP or X schedule, there's a lot of different advanced settings you can choose to change if you want. So you can customize things about your light show, make it smarter if you want to say. Like there are ways you can integrate your show with other devices such as like Alexa's if you can do all that stuff and a bunch of other devices. So when you have a set show player, there's a lot more features if you want to use them that you can. But if you're just using standalone mode on a Pixel controller, it's the bare bones. There's no fancy setup. It's just a scheduler that allows you to turn on the lights at a time and turn them off at a time. So what type of shows would I recommend this method for? Well, only if you have a smaller show that isn't massive because you are limited to the one Pixel controller. And if you really don't want to get into any of the fancy networking stuff, this is the most simple way on this entire list of methods to do it. If you do plan on expanding and this isn't just a one-time show you're planning to run, I really would recommend using a different method because this method is mainly just a quick and easy way to set up a small show. So that's what I'd recommend this method for. So that is all the different methods I wanted to talk about in this video on how you can get your light show devices to communicate. There are a few other methods that I didn't include but they really aren't that common and I felt that these five would be more than likely what most people would be using in their show. The biggest thing to keep in mind though from this video is you don't have to pick just one method and stick to that method. You can mix and match any of the methods you want. For example, you can use the method where you have your own light show network and then also integrate the master and remote method and then you have a remote Raspberry Pi, let's say, and let's say you want that Raspberry Pi to be in bridge mode, sending data to a pixel controller. So that's just one example of how you don't have to pick just one method. You can use multiple different methods. Now for the next few episodes, I'm going to break down how each individual method works. So I'll pick a method for a video and make that video just about that method and how to set it up. But I think that is gonna conclude it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, like always, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.